Hello, everyone. Welcome to our event. This is Working with Recruiters Best Practices. Uh, if you have any questions during the event, we really do want to take your questions. So please use the Q&A function to submit those questions. And we're planning on leaving time at the end so we can answer the questions that you have. Uh, our conversation today is meant to be fully interactive. So feel free to ask any of those questions throughout the event and we'll get to them. Uh, you can also use the chat box to send messages about any te technical issues that you might have or to message one of the panelists, myself or Brian. And just a quick note that this event is being recorded. Uh, with that, I'll turn this over to Brian to introduce yourself. Thanks for joining. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks Heather. Thanks everyone for having me. I'm just gonna share my screen really fast, okay? Um, this is great being here, by the way. I'm very honored to, uh, to be here today to share the knowledge with the UC Berkeley Extension students, the alumni, and then others who came uh, for the job and career knowledge. I see on the LinkedIn invite that there are a lot of people that came from the HR industry of all levels and also fellow industrial organizational psychologists. So welcome. So as for me, I'm happy to join you all today from HR Services, which is a business unit of Robert Half. I work on the client side and I help businesses with interim solutions. So if you'd like to connect with me, you can actually scan the QR code on my screen here and you'll be able to have my contact info. So just a little bit about Robert Half, for those of you that don't know, we are a, wor um, a world leader in recruiting and consulting. And we are globally recognized in all industries that we cover and our commitment to integrity sets us apart from our competitors. Our innovation and high ethical standards have taken us from a small operation in 1948 to the world's largest specialized staffing firm. And I'm happy to share that despite the hardships that 2020 brought, we placed over 150,000 experienced professionals. Also, our business practice, we pride ourselves in our business practice, our focus on our ethics, diversity, inclusion, and social responsibility. So here are some awards that we won these past two years, and we're looking to strive to continue this great legacy. And then also Robert Half is well known for our, our we're well known for our recruiting in our accounting and financial fields, but we do a lot more than that. We also help find solutions for creative and marketing, technology, legal and administrative needs. And we provide our clients with short-term professionals, full-time employees, or entire teams to manage and execute large initiatives. So those are some special, um, some highlights regarding Robert Half. Uh, happy to get started with the questions. Great, thanks, Brian. And yeah, very, very happy to have you here. Uh, we have been chatting for you know several months about different ways that we could help students and help people with their career journey, and uh, came up with a few different questions you know, hoping to just get your, your expert opinion on. Uh, I know that you've had a really lengthy career in recruiting. You've recruited for UC Berkeley, um, but also Visa, Adobe, and now at Robert Half, you work with all kinds of different high profile clients. So, you know, being that you've been in several different types of, of industries and companies, um, what are some market trends that you're really seeing in today's job market? Yeah, sure. Very happy to provide that. So with the economy on the upswing, we're expecting a shift to a hybrid workplace, which is going to be combining both remote employees and also on-site staff. The unemployment rate now for October of 2021 was at 4.6%, and this is actually an improvement since spring. The unemployment rate right now for college degreed workers over the age of 25 is 2.4%, and there are now 10.4 million new job openings. And this is actually up by 3 million since March of 2020. Also, the employee quit level is 4.3 million. So with Robert Half's new research, we found that more than half of office professionals that we surveyed are rethinking their careers and seeking new opportunities. And this has led workers to adopt new expectations for their job and company. So whether these are employees are remote or they work on site. Some of the reasons why workers want to be remote are at home childcare and also fear of the Delta variant. 
And of the 57% who said in our survey that they are rethinking their careers, 40% said they'll prioritize their personal life over their job moving forward. So if you're among them, this definitely has a direct effect on your career development. You want to set aside your sights on a position at your current company or seek one at a new firm that will allow you to maximize your pursuits of outside work. And I'll share right now that the demand for HR professionals, it's rising and companies are trying to ramp up to hire to take on new initiatives to grow revenue. And also the workload for HR teams has skyrocketed during the pandemic and it's expected to increase further as employees return to the office. So right now, companies that are in need of additional HR help, they're seeking out, uh, seeking out both employees for contract and also permanent opportunities. And right now, skilled HR professionals can be scarce. And that means that employees must act quickly and offer more in terms of pay and benefits to beat out their competitions, as evidenced by the stat that I have up here. And by the way, so for those of you that are outside of Silicon Valley, the answer is yes, it is totally possible to work for a Silicon Valley company from the convenience of your own home. And um, one thing I also want to bring up too, finally, is that benefits have changed and are continuing to evolve. So pre-pandemic, a lot of the perks were on site, such as gyms, office meals, commuter benefits and corporate shuttles, and also very elaborate workplaces and workstations. But now perks are targeted towards remote workers and there needs to be effective from working from home. So I hope those market trends shed light on what's going on right now. Super helpful. And I would just love to do a temperature check with our attendees. Um, uh, you know, let us know in the chat box, where are you in your uh, job, <laughs> job search? Or you know, if, if you are searching for a new role, what are some of the reasons that you're looking for a new role, if, if you would like to share. Um, do any of the things that, that Brian sort of mentioned, you know, resonate uh, with you? What, are you looking for that, that better work-life balance? Are you looking for flexibility? Um, what, what kinds of things really resonate with you? So mm -hmm. feel free to, to let us know in the chat box. Yes, absolutely. So another question, we have some students from our HR certification program here uh, that we offer at UC Berkeley Extension, one of our uh, 37 plus uh, certifi professional certification programs. Um, so for, for folks from our HR cert program or even people who might be considering going into the HR field, um, can you maybe just take a little bit of a deeper dive and talk about what types of jobs and skills are in demand right now? Absolutely. Very happy to do so. HR is actually very in demand right now, particularly in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I'm going to share with you, these are some of the positions that we're hiring for and that all companies um, across the board are hiring for. And if you notice the level of seniority listed is from top to bottom with the most entry being at the very top. So right now is a fantastic time to be in HR, whether you're beginning your career or you're furthering your career. And one of the major reasons why companies are backfilling two years worth of headcount. So actually now another one is that candidates have worksite options. You can work remote, hybrid, on-site, and pre-pandemic these options were rare, if not unavailable. And Heather, going back to what you were saying about the key uh, skill sets, here are some that are in demand in today's market. And to the UC Berkeley Extension students getting your HR certification, I think that's fantastic. And regarding the program too, you have a lot to gain. So you are more marketable with your HR certification. You are able to leverage your network of classmates and alumni. And also you have access to career services. You know, we get to um, you get help from great people such as Heather for job search training and connections to various companies. And also here are some other certifications that are in demand as well as far as SPHR and then anything having to do with recruiting, especially with sourcing. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, though, is California labor law is very in demand right now. So we're talking employee relations, labor relations. So for those of you that are outside of California and you want to work for a California based company, California labor law has actually been described as the most difficult to learn and execute. So learning through a California certification program or something such as the HR certification through UC Berkeley Extension, that could definitely help ease the learning curve and build solid fundamentals. 
So I hope this gives everyone an idea of what's out there right now in terms of HR opportunities. Definitely, thanks. And uh, you know, we have we did get some comments coming in, uh, folks saying they're really seeking uh, financial security and flexibility. I see flexibility a lot in our chat box here. Remote options and flexibility, um, better salary, work-life balance, annual perks. Um, and, and so on. So yeah, I, I think um, that really does reflect the, the trend that the trends that you spoke of, Brian. Yeah. And thanks for the, the, the shout out on uh, UC Berkeley <laughs> Extensions HR certification course. Um, it's again, one of several courses that, that we offer here for certification. So really allowing anyone, you know, no matter where you are in your career to, to sort of gain some expertise. One of the amazing perks of working for UC is I actually get to take courses as well. And I, I am just in the last week of, of a, an interesting course on onboarding and recruiting. So uh, it's, it's really helping me to hopefully do my job to support students even better. Oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, fun, fun opportunity. Um, so, you know, uh, I am taking this course. I have been interested in uh, what recruiters do and how I can help students uh, learn about how to work with recruiters. So you're, you and I have had some conversations about this. You're the expert. Can you tell us a little bit about what a recruiter really does? And um, I suppose there are a couple of different types of recruiters, too. So, so happy to do so. Um, there are actually the main two types of recruiters are internal and external. And I'm happy to speak on the two differences and also the shared functions of the two. So the first one is an internal recruiter. Most of you are familiar with these because these are the recruiters that represent a company and reach out to you to start that initial interview process. So their role is to fill their employer's job openings. And they're the first impression to candidates. They're the face of their employer and a majority of the jobs that they're gonna fill are permanent jobs. With external recruiters, these are recruiters that partner with other outside organizations to fill their jobs. So they work with many industries and company sizes. They have the flexibility to offer services to both candidates and also hiring managers. And there's also more variety of roles to fill such as contract, perm, project, full-time and also part-time. And let me give you a good example to differentiate the two. So if you go to a networking event and you meet a recruiter, particularly an internal recruiter, that internal recruiter can help you get hired into their company. And they can also provide you with insight and a scope of what it's like to work there. With an external recruiter, they can do the same. But the difference is if that you're in management or you manage a team, the external recruiter can partner with you to help alleviate any work that you have or just backfill roles. So this can also be in terms of like providing an interim solution, a permanent employee, project-based work. So some examples where we've actually helped out are, let's say backfilling an open role or maybe a workday implementation and having somebody come on that can help out with that. Or I've spoken with VPs before that are so busy and they need something taken off their plate. So let's say, for example, we would get them somebody that would help out with their enrollment season, either on a permanent basis or a uh, part-time or even a project basis. So those are the different types of recruiters, and um, I'm happy to get into the shared functions of each of the different ones. So as recruiters, <clears throat> recruiters have to have a pulse on what's going on as far as the industries, market trends, technology, and intel on competing companies. It's also the job of the recruiter to guide and influence. Being a project manager and being able to be the market expert to lead hiring managers to make the best decisions and higher top talent. Also being able to influence and imp improve processes and overcome obstacles in the hiring process. And this is all while juggling sometimes 40 plus hiring managers or 40 plus job openings that we're trying to fill. We're also very well known for sourcing. And these are using creative, efficient and innovative methods to find and attract top talent. We also have to be experts when it comes to the offer negotiation as far as knowing salary trends, knowing what competing companies are offering, setting expectations throughout the recruitment, and being an advisor to the hiring manager and also the candidate throughout the recruitment. And lastly, of course, closing the deal. 
Another one that's very important nowadays is candidate experience. So recruiters, we have to be memorable. We got to provide great customer service and get candidates excited about joining companies. And the goal really is just top ratings. Nowadays with the internet, candidates talk, they'll post on job boards and they'll share their negative and positive experiences of their interview processes. So really, you know you're doing your job if you have repeat candidates or they come back for new roles or um, even better if they give referrals and say, hey, I had a great um, recruiting experience with you. You provided me a great candidate experience. I'd like to refer one of my colleagues. So that should take care of the different types of uh, recruiters and also the functions. Great, thanks. And so, you know, a lot of folks here, it sounds like are looking for new roles. Um, and recruiters have been super active online and LinkedIn. Um, if you're someone who's a job seeker, what's a good way to actually start a conversation with recruiters or even stand out, you know, in, in the process so recruiters are noticing you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Happy to get into that. One thing I'll also share, too, regarding recruiting as well is as far as like what we'll do to find such candidates. And um, I'll start off with the means that we use to find talent so that way you can be more visible. And then I'm also happy to share tips on how you can work with recruiters and, of course, get noticed so that way you can find that good opportunity and your, um, maybe even the job of your dreams. So with regards to recruiting, you are worth your weight in gold if you're able to find talent that no one is, has access to. So for today, I'm going to share the more traditional methods of finding talent. The first, of course, being that we use an applicant tracking system. This is a software that we use, and we use it to post jobs. And a lot of times we'll post jobs on our company website or on various job websites to cast a wide net. And then once we get our applicants, we're able to sift through them and build a pipeline of talented candidates. We'll also use something called a Boolean search, which uses keywords and modifiers to find key skill sets, education, and candidate locations as well. The next popular method is LinkedIn Recruiter. So I can't emphasize enough for you all to have a LinkedIn, um, a LinkedIn account because the feature that's on LinkedIn Recruiter is that it turns LinkedIn into an applicant tracking system. We now have a resume database and we'll use it to find and track candidates who are actively or passively job hunting. And I'll be able to, I'll be happy to get into that uh, next. The other one is referrals. So you can even use your networks for, to help you get a job, but as recruiters, we'll leverage our network. We'll also work with our hiring managers to find out who they know, who's important in their network. And then also we'll even ask current candidates for referrals, our new hires, or even alumni from universities. And there are even companies such as Robert Half that have referral bonus programs with incentives to introduce top talent to uh, talent acquisition. The other one is professional groups. So recruiters will join professional groups to have outreach to the members for opportunities to ask them for referrals or even get inside information. And the types of groups are either diversity inclusion, industry specific, anything regarding technology and also educational such as uh, university specific. Also we'll reach out at job fairs. And at this point we're able to meet hiring managers and candidates and put faces to names. And it's also for brand awareness. And you can find us at diversity, inclusion, job fairs, anything regarding a particular skill set focus, university job fairs, and also professional conventions. And then also too, this is an industry term, it's called boomerangs. So these are prior employees who left, and then we got them to return to, their, to our, uh, the company, or they came back for another assignment or a play, um, an, another engagement with us. So those are some of the more traditional ways. And then Heather, you were asking how to get noticed by recruiters. Absolutely, um, I'm very willing to share that. And it goes back to LinkedIn. So one of the biggest features, if you are unemployed right now, is to show that you're open to work. You can go into the settings and then once you activate that, there's gonna be a green ribbon that shows around your profile picture that shows that you are open to work. And as a recruiter, this is great just because we get to find out who's available and who could start immediately. There's also an option to reveal, um, to not reveal that. So in the settings, it'll actually show, just show that you're open to outside recruiters, but not anyone within my organization. So those, that's a feature for those of you that are employed, but you don't want your current employer to know. Going back to those professional groups, I highly recommend joining them. Not just joining them, but be active, mingle, 
network and showcase your skill set. An example would be giving an HR presentation on current trends, and recruiters will definitely will notice. And so there's outreach, but there's also effective outreach. And that means reaching out to the appropriate contact and sending out LinkedIn emails and cover letters. An example would be sending an email with your resume and cover letter to the recruiter who actually posted the job. You want to make sure that if you're going to reach out to somebody, they are directly involved with the job or the department that you want to work for. And then also, not many people think about this, but if you want to venture out into a new company or even a new professional area, working as a contract professional can help you sample what's out there. And external recruiters can help place you on a variety of assignments that let you experience firsthand what other companies and professional fields are like. So whether so when you land in a place that's comfortable for you, your interim role, it actually may morph into a full-time position. And this actually happens a lot more often than you may think. So hope that covers everything. What other questions do you all have? Yeah, super helpful. And I'm, I'm very glad that you took a little bit of time to also talk about, you know, what recruiters are looking for and, and then you know, going into how can job seekers uh, get noticed by mm -hmm. those folks. Um, so if you're someone who's considering working with a recruiter, uh, an external recruiter, what are some of the benefits of that type of a partnership or arrangement? Yeah, I'm very happy to share some tips to help everyone put their best foot forward. So before you reach out to your recruiter, you want to know what your career goals are. You want to know if you want, if you want to know your also short-term and your long-term goals. So that way, when you speak with them, you're not fumbling around and you have an idea of what you want. It also helps recruiters out as well. You also want to know, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a permanent position, a contract, a part-time role, or maybe a temp to hire position? Because we also want to know too, what environment do you want to be in? Or do you thrive in? Maybe a big company, small company, a formal environment, a casual work environment. Another thing, too, is you want to know what your desired salary range is and whether you're open to on-site, hybrid, or remote work. Make sure that your resume and LinkedIn profile are also up to date and polished. You also want to have your relevant skill sets. As I had mentioned, we'll do Boolean search operators to find particular skill sets in software. So make sure that that's on your profile so that we can find you. Also, if you have gaps in your resume, discuss those with your recruiter. I can't emphasize this enough, but Nowadays, you got to dress the part, even if it's virtual. So we recommend business casual, which is very similar to what I'm wearing right now. And if it's a virtual interview, have a good background, whether it's a you know, virtual background or a real background, you want to make sure that you're able to be clearly seen. And then if you're unsure, you can always ask the recruiter what attire would be appropriate prior to the interview. This one is very important. I can't emphasize this enough, which is to do the prior research. Look up the company and find out what they do read news articles that they're in and understand the specs of the role. And on the interviews, if you're talking to the recruiter or the hiring manager, you wanna really convey interest and investment and you wanna show that you're prepared. Make sure that you go in there and you really put your best foot forward. And Heather was mentioning external recruiters. One of the steps is you can actually sign up online. There are a lot of external recruiting sites. Ours in particular, you can sign up online and get into our database so that way we'll, we'll reach out to you. And even if you currently have a job, we welcome hearing from you. So that way we'll let you know if your dream job opens up. And uh, Heather, you had asked about what's the benefits of working with an external recruiter. Yeah, finding a job today can be very overwhelming. And working with an external recruiter actually removes some of the job hunt stress. And we work with companies that need staff and we match company needs with candidate skills. So what we provide that a lot of people are unfamiliar with, but they learn, they love this, is we provide interview prep, market trends, and also we give feedback either before the interview, after the interview. So we're like your agent, if you want to think about it. And we also frequently update our databases of jobs in a wide variety of fields, both locally and also around the world. Our local offices have deep roots in their communities and work closely with companies to know exactly who they're looking for. And our recruiters are also often aware of positions that will soon open or companies that are willing to make room for the right talent. So best of all, also, you can specify the type of work arrangement that you want, whether it's temp, part time or even full time. And also registered candidates, they can have an we have, they have a library of learning materials to help improve their skill set. 
And best of all, most people don't know this, but I'm sharing with you right now, this is at no risk to you. You don't have to pay anything to search our listings, to join our database of candidates, or even get placed in a job. Amazing. Uh, well, I, I wonder, Brian, if you could go back actually just a couple slides yeah. to, um, sure. yeah, just back sure. a couple. Um, the one before, yep. <laughs> we have a request for the link uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. to go into our, our <laughs> chat box. And I also just want to mention, you know, uh, with these tips, if you're someone who is really just getting started, maybe you need some guidance around setting your career goals, trying to figure out what exactly you want, finding your why, as I like to talk about a lot, um, and getting uh, your resume up to speed, your LinkedIn profile up to speed. Um, UC Berkeley Extension does have that support for you. So uh, that's my role as a career services specialist here uh, to, to help students get up to speed. Um, we have some various different career training programs. We have a career readiness boot camp coming up uh, in on December 11th and 12th. And I'll put that uh, link into the chat box as well. So anyone who is kind of maybe, you know, not quite ready to, to get in front of a recruiter yet, maybe you want a little bit of guidance first around what you even want to do. Um, we, we've got you. So just mm -hmm. give us a, a message. Definitely work with Heather and career counselors because not everyone just as I like to give this analogy, no one walks up to a piano and just plays. The same thing with job hunting. You got to learn what it takes in terms of how to be presentable, how to create the right resume, the right LinkedIn profile, how to outreach, and then also networking events, how to have what's called an elevator pitch. So that way, when you meet someone, you know exactly, you can share with them who you are, what you do, and what you're looking for. So these are absolutely great um, references to use and great resources to have. Great. Thanks, Brian. And um, just the last question that I have before we turn to our audience, uh, when you're in an interview process or, you know, when you're considering getting started with a recruiter, what are some questions that candidates should be asking recruiters to make sure that they're getting the most out of the experience? Yeah, sure. Happy to go to that. So with regards to being able to work with a recruiter, here's some things. The first one, of course, is the location. Nowadays, with work being remote, hybrid or on-site, you want to know that from the get-go. You also want to know, too, what type of job is this? Is this a permanent role, a contract, or um, a project? There's nothing wrong with asking the interview process from the get-go, too. You want to find out, is it virtual, on-site? How many rounds of interviews are there going to be? Who am I going to be meeting with? Those sorts of things. And don't be afraid to ask for feedback and be open to constructive criticism. And this is with regards to your resume, your LinkedIn profile, or even asking, hey, I would love to prep before the interview. Do you mind either doing a mock interview with me or giving me some tips so that way I can put my best foot forward? This is another big one too. Just because a company is well known or has a big name, it may not be the best fit for you. So you wanna know right up front, what's the company culture? and finding out if that's a match for your values and where you wanna head in your career. Another one too is the timeline. When are they looking to fill this job? How many rounds of interviews are there? Or in terms of the turnaround time, what's that looking like? So those are some of the questions um, to ask there. Okay, so yeah, let's get into the Q and A. <laughs> Great, thanks Brian. Um, I realize I'm trying to share our links here uh, but I think I'm just sending them to us internally. So let me try and send that out again. Um, and, uh, you know, we do have a bunch of questions coming in uh, from the chat box as well as the Q&A. Please, if you're trying to ask questions, just put them into the Q&A so we can try to keep them all in one spot. But um, maybe before we go to those, do we want to maybe just uh, take a look at some of the ones that have come in through the the chat box initially. I have here the, I have five questions. I want to make sure I'm looking at the right thing. I have five questions. Then I've seen the chat box that there are 14 comments. Okay. Right. And it looks like some of those are questions. Um, uh, there's a good one here from Tinu. Hi, Tinu. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. um, how does Robert Half help in career shifts or changes? 
Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things I also mentioned too is with regards to um, contracts. So the division that I work in, I'll say, for example, um, we like to work with people that are unemployed so that way we can get them back on their feet immediately or someone that's looking to make a career shift. Um, I recommend working with career counselors such as Heather if you want to make a career change. And also we can polish um, up that resume. But you want to make sure that you your resume has transferable skill sets. So that way, when you do apply for a job, they'll be able to see, oh yeah, they've done this before. This is something that they're very familiar with. And if we hire them on, it will be uh, less of a learning curve as opposed to hiring someone that has no experience. And as I mentioned before, doing a contract, um, it's great because you get to essentially try before you buy. You get to see, do I like this job? Do I like the company? Do I like the supervisor? And then from there, if you get converted, great. If not, you can always try it in another contract. So let's say you're interested in, in benefits. You can try it out. And if it's not for you, you can say, hey, okay, well, I tried that out. Let me maybe go into talent acquisition and you can try something out that way. Great, great question and thorough answer. Um, uh, we have one from John. Uh, I'm pursuing my master's degree mm -hmm. um, and in IO right now, and I would like to kickstart my career in HR fields. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, hopefully, John, you got some really great tips about uh, you know kickstarting your career and some of the things that that you can cover. Do you have anything to add, Brian? Yeah, sure. So I also have a master's in industrial organizational psychology, and I'm fully aware that not many people know what it is. So my advice, network, get out there. And that's how I actually got my first job ever, which was 10 years ago. I went to a, um, I signed up with Sherm and I went to a networking event. I had business cards, which <laughs> back then were paper business cards. Now you can do it uh, digitally, kind of like the one I have now. And you, I went around and this was my elevator pitch. It was, hi, I'm Brian DeCal. I just graduated with my master's in industrial organizational psychology, which uses psychology principles to make the workforce better. And I'm looking for an opportunity in talent acquisition. And there you go. I went around the room and I said that to everybody. Now we can also do that virtually in chats and you can connect with people on LinkedIn. But all you need is one person to be like, yeah, I want to learn more. And that's what happened to me. It actually led to my first job. It was a part-time job in recruiting, but that's what helped me skyrocket my career. So don't just sit behind a computer and apply all day. You want to get your name out there. You want to have an elevator pitch, reach out to the right people, have a mentor, and just be more proactive with your job search, just rather than sitting and waiting for everything to happen to come to you. It, it can be a little scary getting out there, I know, but uh, uh, we're here and we've got you. So if you find yourself in that scenario, you know, don't hesitate to reach out for, for help. Um, uh, you know, I, in the same vein of things, we have a question. Um, are there roles, you know, available right now in industrial organizational psychology? What is that field looking like right now? Yeah. So with IO psychology, there's different sides. So there's the stat side. And yes, absolutely. There are a lot of jobs with regards to test and measurement, being able to measure things such as job satisfaction, administering surveys, and that's on the HR analytics side. And so I recommend going into that field if you're on more in that side of IO psychology. And then there's the other side, which is organizational development, talent acquisition. Those are the ones that I gravitated towards. So the title may not say industrial organizational psychologist, but read the job description and see if that matches up with what you're learning right now. Um, I'll share with you right now that right out of the gates, you definitely have to work your way up. So <laughs> fresh out of grad school, they're not going to put you in front of a company and you're not going to assess them <laughs> and then give them recommendations right off the bat. You have to work to that. But in time, you are going to be that person uh, to be able to provide your expertise or go in and shape an organization whether that's as a consultant going in and saying, hey, um, I'm here to help out with your diversity and inclusion initiatives, and here's what I recommend, or going into a company or being hired by a company and doing that and carrying out diversity and inclusion within the organization and improving that. And I'm sure transferable skills come into play quite a bit when you're uh, starting, starting out in that field. Um, we have a question here about finding recruiters. How do you find mm -hmm. recruiters that specialize in specifically operations or program management? Yeah, my recommendation is you can always find out who the job poster is. So a lot of times if you look on LinkedIn and you go to the jobs page, you can find out. So let's say, for example, I'm hiring for that. You're going to see posted by Brian DeKell. Send an in-mail and connect with them and just say, I saw the following job. I'd like to learn more. 
or if it's already filled, just say, I'd like to set up a coffee chat with you and just learn more if at all possible. And this is also uh, recommended to do within your organization too. And you don't even have to have a job posting. You can say, hi, I noticed that you're on the HR operations side. I'd like to set up a coffee chat with you and learn more about your department, learn more about the team. And then from there, you can find out whether it's a fit for you or not. Um, and then also take up an internship. Again, take up a contract. You wanna make sure that you build your resume and build your experience. So that way that'll propel you to the role that you ultimately wanna be in when you uh, see yourself, you know, maybe a year from now or five years from now. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we do have the professional internship program here at UC Berkeley Extension. So if you're someone who's interested in pursuing an internship, the link is in the chat box. Mm -hmm. um, one last question from the chat, and then we'll turn to those sure. Q&A questions so we can get to everyone. Uh, what's the best strategy for setting salary requirements when you're asked either in an interview or by an agency? That's a great question. Yeah, and I recommend it first asking with the agency because we always like to set expectations with our candidates too, to let them know whether they're way too high or way too low, and we like to advise them on that. And we'll also provide an assessment based upon your resume, how you interview, and just your level of experience, and we'll make a recommendation from there. Um, you want to look at the location because nowadays, yes, you can absolutely work in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania and work for a Silicon Valley company. And you want to find out not only what the cost of living is for Pittsburgh, but also for the Bay Area. And particularly if it's a position that's in demand, like a recruiter. I was talking with recruiters in Pittsburgh and they're making Bay Area salaries. So you want to be able to know your, do your homework, look online. Another one too is leverage your network. If you have an interview with a company and you look through your network and you find out that that person you went to high school is actually employed there, reach out to them, ask them about the, um, what it's like work there, working there. And of course, there's also various job boards, but yeah, working with an external recruiter will let you know right from the get-go. So that way we're able to position you with a salary that's attractive to clients and that won't scare people away. Great, great advice. Um, now we'll turn to the Q&A and uh, Brian, do you want me to read you those or do you want to kind of just, just read them out loud and start going through them? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to go through these. So is it true that if you work with an external recruiter, your salary will be lower than what would have been applied in your own because of the fact that external recruiters are incentivized by companies to get candidates to accept the lower salary possible? That is incorrect. That is completely incorrect. and also depends on the type of recruiter that you're working with. What we try to do as recruiters is make sure that we make, um, we try to give an offer that's best both for our clients and also for the candidate as well. So yeah, I'm glad someone brought that up and I'm happy to dispel that. Let's see what else. Oh, that was actually one of the middle ones. Um, advice for new IO students, corporate experience. I believe I answered that one. Okay, here's a good one. Is there any point an entry-level college graduate with less than one year of work experience in their field? Oh, hang on, I moved up again. Uh, working with external recruiters. I ask because most entry-level jobs require three to five years of relevant experience. So if you don't have that, is that just wasting everyone's time? And I'm happy to spell that one too. Recruiters, external recruiters, will work from everyone from a fresh college grad all the way up to a VP. And here at Robert Half, we actually have various divisions that help out with different positions. So one of, of course, is uh, our office team division. Our office team division helps out with entry-level roles, support roles, admin roles, and they'll work with positions such as HR assistant, HR coordinator, recruiting coordinator. And those positions are actually in demand right now in the Bay Area, especially if someone's willing to be hybrid or go on site. So don't think that you have to be this very polished professional in order to work with a recruiter at all. Okay. Length of resume, CV, uh, resume or CV for experienced candidate. <laughs> this is a, a traditional question. Like it's always like, oh, it should always be one page. My advice is have your relevant skill sets on there. An example is if you're applying for a job in benefits, don't have your experience on there in talent acquisition. You want to make sure that you can showcase your skills that if they hire you, you can make an immediate impact. So you don't have to have your job from when you were working in high school or your work study job have relevant experience on there. So that's my, um, that's my advice right there. Okay. So we all know that ageism is real. How can we possibly get around that? What are your options? And we have a lot to offer. 
So with ageism, we try to overlook that at all. We overlook that as a matter of fact. And a lot of the companies that I have worked, um, that I've worked in, that is actually considered uh, discrimination. And diversity is a big thing, and that even includes age. So um, my answer to that is if a company is doing that to you, you wouldn't want to work for that company anyway, because that is a poor reflection on their HR department. So if you're having, if, I wouldn't resort to that immediately. I would just say, I would just say maybe you were deselected for other reasons. So don't jump to that right away. And um, nowadays companies, they were, are looking for diversity, as I mentioned, when it comes to ethnicity, religion, LGBTQ, and then also geographic. And finally, that inv involves age as well. So yeah, don't be discouraged at all, please. Yeah, I, if I can add to that one too. Yeah. I mean, um, I, at Extension, you know, we're continuing education. We get students coming in at all levels of their career. And in some cases, in several cases, you know, we have quite a few people who are coming in after taking long breaks in the middle of a career uh, and things like that. And um, absolutely uh, echoing what you said, Brian, I mean, it's, uh, it's important to just try to keep going, really get the, those transferable skills and every, all of the value that you have uh, relative to the role on there. And uh, we're happy to help uh, with anyone who's a returnee or you know, uh, returning to, to their career or changing careers in the middle of their profession or even towards the end of their profession. So mm -hmm. don't hesitate to reach out. Yeah, uh, there's one here actually that says that they, um, they have not seen many recruiters respond to their messages or LinkedIn and what routes would you recommend? So I'm assuming this is applying um, and trying to get the attention of an internal recruiter. Uh, Heather, if I may, I can also share uh, one of the slides that I have on working with an external recruiter because it's a different ball game than if you were to apply and work through an internal recruiter. So I'm just gonna share my screen one more time, just bear with me. Um, let me pull this on up. So. With an internal recruiter, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this process. You apply for a role, sometimes you don't hear back and a recruiter will contact you and sometimes they leave you hanging like in the dark. Well, this one with external recruiters, it's a different ball game because again, we try to be your agent and have your best interest at heart. So quite a number of job seekers are unaware actually of the recruiting process when it comes to working with external recruiters. So I'll work with the progression. So again, you use our resources at Robert Half you search the job database for the positions that interest you, and then you apply directly, or you can reach out to the local recruiter to learn more. And if the recruiter is handling the position and thinks you're a strong candidate, they will reach out for an interview. And if your skills and interests are a match and the employer improves, you'll have an interview with the company. And if the company decides to make an offer, we handle the negotiations and the paperwork for you. So basically we do a lot of the legwork for you to make connections with companies. And as I had previously mentioned, unlike in, um, when you apply for a role internally, you're kind of on your own and you're trying to find information on the internet or from people. Whereas with an external recruiter, we're able to advise you on how to, um, on again, how to put your best foot forward, interview prep. And then also we negotiate the salary for you and make sure that it's a number that you feel confident in taking. So that should answer that. And then let's see, is it necessary to have certifications before I start my career and what are recommended? And the answer is it depends. One thing that I think will look very good and I mentioned previously is um, if you're outside of California and you wanna do HR for a California based company, let's say like in Silicon Valley, definitely get a certification that helps out with California labor law practices and learn that. Again, UC Berkeley Extension offers that. Another one is <clears throat> when it comes to sourcing, I have a certification myself in sourcing and that helps out when it comes to being able to get creative and find ways to find top talent. Because again, you're worth your weight in gold if you can find those candidates, especially the ones that aren't looking, which is what we call passive candidates. Another one too, and this is to put in a plug, um, joining Robert Half is a great career in terms of like, we have so much training on the job, role plays, training materials. Ever since I've joined Robert Half, I've been blown away by the amount of training and support that they've been here. And we take on fresh college grads as well. So if any of you are interested, you can also scan my QR code here and I'll be happy to introduce you. But I recommend also, if you love talent acquisition, getting started in external recruiting is a fantastic option because 
you you get to work with so many different industries and companies. You get a pulse on what's out there. So that's one thing I also recommend as well is getting started in extra recruiting and then building your career from there, either within the company or maybe you might even join corporate. I'm happy to share that there are a lot of people within Robert Half. Like when I was doing my training, a lot of the corporate trainers had started off in my position and then they were able to gain their experience and then within Robert Half apply for a corporate training role. So hopefully that answers that. Let's see. If an internal recruiter reaches out and asks for salary requirements and states that they will contact you after speaking with the hiring manager but hasn't called back, does that mean that you were not selected for an interview? It can mean a lot of different things. And here are some examples too. Maybe they lost funding or they lost, um, they lost headcount for the position. Um, but you can always send a follow-up email and just make sure that you restate your interest. Um, if anything too, you can also ask um, for feedback. And if it was very positive, you can ask them, can I be forwarded onto another recruiter that is hiring for a position similar to mine. Let's see. Any advice for someone jumping into a career without a confident uh, foundation? So again, going with certifications and any experience that you can get is definitely worth it. So my first job actually had to drive an hour and 20 minutes to go do a recruiting job. But it was worth it because that was my big break. And at that point, you just really need your big break. And sometimes that means taking on a, a contract job or an entry level role and then learning and asking for training and seeking opportunities within the company and building up that way. Um, I know a lot of HR professionals that started out, let's say, either as an admin or an HR assistant, and they had a great mentor or they were uh, there was a career track program and they just really took advantage. Or we have people on the contracting side that they took on different contract opportunities and they became more marketable in the process. And in doing so, they landed their dream opportunity. So those are some advice that I have there. Okay, what are things that should be considered about the company before accepting an offer? And you'll be happy to hear a lot of times that companies, they have their benefits page or their perks listed on their company website. So I would recommend looking at that. Additionally, work with your recruiter too, your external recruiter. And we have inside information. I love telling, as a matter of fact, a lot of my candidates, hey, this is what um, the company culture is like, the team. Here's some great things that a lot of our consultants have said about working there. And any information that you can have, the better. And a lot of times too, a lot of people get caught up in the salary, but they also fail to look at what the total compensation is, or if you get a benefits package, how much that'll take off as opposed to if you were just earning a straight salary. And then also perks, like for example, um, pre-pandemic, there would be commuter benefits and um, having, let's say, for example, a free Caltrain pass, that would save probably about $100 a month on traveling. So as opposed to having a higher salary and having the commuter benefit, you're able to save money there. Do recruiters look into uh, LinkedIn recommendations? Yes, we do. To us, that's another reference. We wanna see if somebody has positive recommendations, if they are someone that really makes an impact and just to also see what this person worked on in terms of projects or what makes them really stand out. Well, we're getting a lot of salary questions here. <laughs> uh, what are some tips for effectively networking? Also, um, okay, so, for effectively networking, what I recommend is the following. You want to have an elevator speech ready. Again, it's who you are, what you do, and what you're looking for, and go through that progression. Also, join organizations and events that are lined up to your goal. Let's say if you want to become an HR generalist, don't join something that's very broad. Let's say like the Bay Area chapter of uh, professionals. You want to join, for example, like the... Um, the SHRM chapter for HR professionals in San Francisco. That's more targeted. And that way you'll be able to run into people that align and have opportunities for what you're looking for. So that's one. As far as LinkedIn, there's nothing wrong with going to a company, a company a LinkedIn page and going down and seeing the roster on who, let's say the VP of HR is, who recruiters are. But again, effective reach out. You want to reach out to the people that are in the department that are interest to you. And you also want to make sure that 
um, you're polished with regards to your LinkedIn profile. Have a current picture up that's professional. You also want to list any skill sets that you have. You also want to make sure that uh, when you apply to a job, it lines up with the requirements of the job. So um, with regards to networking, just get yourself out there and practice, practice, practice. I have a lot of people that are they're like, oh, I'm shy. I didn't want to get out. But you can do it virtually, too. You can go to a virtual meeting, strike up a chat with somebody or send it an email. Uh, you can send an email to somebody or even, again, Robert Half, if you reach out to a recruiter, there's not, we'll usually either reach out, especially if you're a fit for one of our uh, positions, and we're happy to walk you through processes. Um, one thing I do want to share, so um, with regards to connecting, I also want to set expectations. So I'm on the client side. So if any of you reach out to me with regards to employment, um, with regards to like candidate sides, I'm going to uh, pass you to the appropriate party, which is our talent director. And then from there, they will be the ones to um, do a screen, learn more about your background. And then from there, they'll be able to partner you off to the uh, appropriate client service director that can get you to the right opportunity. If you're interested in working at Robert Half, I'm also um, open to connect with you as well. But again, wanted to set expectations. Um, and then also too with Heather, she is the one that will help you when it comes to mock interviews, resume tips being able to negotiate salaries. So she is more on the candidate side, I'm more on the client side. And in which case, if you are someone that's here visiting and you are looking for an interim solution, you're looking for a permanent solution, whatever, let's connect. I'm happy to chat with you and help you navigate the rest of this year and also the start of uh, 2022. I think we're right about wrap, ready to wrap up then at this yeah. point. Well, um, very, 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 Huge thank you again, Brian, to, to you and to Robert Half for joining and providing us with all of this really super helpful information. I learned a ton. Uh, I hope that all of our attendees learned a lot as well. Um, how can people get a hold of you? I, yeah. see, I see the box over your shoulder, but uh, <laughs> tell us a little more. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll uh, share my screen again so that way you can get a bigger QR code. So I'll do this. I'll share. Okay, so here's the QR code, and you can you can scan that, and you'll be able to get a hold of me via LinkedIn, my email address. Also, uh, you'll have my work number. You're welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, regarding recruiters at Robert Half, just look at our company site and find recruiters that specialize in what you're looking for. So an example would be if you are looking for a financial career, look at our job titles and see what department that we work in, and you can reach out. And again, make sure it's an effective reach out. Just like, hey, my name is John Doe. I attended a presentation um, at UC Berkeley Extension and I'm very impressed with what I saw with Robert Half. I'd like to connect with you and find out what opportunities you have. I'm interested, let's say, in, in, a, in finance and accounting and I'm entry level. So I'd love to get that first big break. And then here's my, attaches my resume. That's far more effective. And we'd be happy to connect with you um, that way. Great. Thanks again, Brian. And thank you everyone who attended and contributed to the discussion. Thank you for all of the really great questions. Uh, it was really uh, great to be able to see what types of questions people have and, and hopefully get those answered for you. Of course, if you want to follow up with Brian, if you still have questions, you can reach him there. And uh, we're also available to assist. Um, uh, you can reach the career services team at BG Career Services at extension.edu. Just putting that into the chat box here. Um, and additionally, uh, we do have a couple other events coming up. This is the second event in our career services um, open to the public type of events. Uh, we will have a couple more. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, on December 11th and 12th, we have a weekend career readiness boot camp where we're going through uh, how to write a resume, how to interview, uh, mock interviewing, uh, negotiating, getting your LinkedIn profile up and ready to go. So check that out on our website as well, berkeleyextension.edu, and uh, stay tuned for, for more events. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks, everyone, for, for joining. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure meeting you all. And um, yeah, this is great. Um, I'm happy to come back again. This was wonderful. <laughs> we'll take you up on that. Bye, everyone. <laughs>